Everybody, it's Tyler here at The Wave at WPI, checking in with 871X Soar, doing absolutely phenomenal here so far. Had a great uh, history leading up to this event, a couple events wins and an excellence award, uh, and went undefeated at all your uh, local events so far, too, so congratulations on a great season. Uh, 871, really cool robot overall. Uh, they kept the same drive base, but they really have iterated uh, from ground up from there, so we'll be covering a full overview of what goes into it. A couple cool innovative things with code we'll be talking about, uh, and really like their uh, slapper mechanism as well. So let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Andy, let's start off on this robot here. We're going to talk about the uh, blocker that you have. Uh, one of the things I love about teams that have such great scoring prowess is that through the development of the meta, blockers have become so important as well, too. So talk to me about what's gone into that, and we're also going to cover your intake. Yeah, so this is actually the second version of a blocker. For the first version, we had like um, a plastic here, and we don't have the second stage at all. We also have like a standoff here, so that when it goes up, the, when it goes up, the plastic here just like blocks all the tribal. But then, because um, rise shooters are introduced, we figured out that they can just go over our blocker. So that's why we modified the second version. We added like the um, second part of the blocker, where it activates with the first stage using the string, so that it holds it in place. And then also we figured out that um, second stage blocker is really heavy, so most of the time the piston can't really like afford pushing it up multiple times. Um, so we had to take off the standoff and change it to a string. Sure. And then also the plastic here is removed into screen so that it's way lighter. Originally we can use blocker around two, three times in game. After all the change on weights, we can use it around six, seven times a game. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and have at this event so far at the Wave WPI, have you been using your blocker as well during the match? Yeah, I've been using it for a few match and it's been working pretty well. And although sometimes the ball tri ball goes through like from the space in between here. Sure. It's actually better for us because it falls right in front of our intake and we can just intake the ball up and then score it. Like just turn around and score it. Well, that's a great transition into your intake. Talk to me more about uh, what's gone to that and, of course, uh, any iterations that you made throughout the season. Um, so our intake originally was just like a normal intake. And then after that, we just um, doubled up the band here because we figured that make it way stronger. And then we also added um, here. We added a lot of screws and like caps here to make sure that the rubber band doesn't fall out because originally rubber band falling off is a big problem for us. It falls off around every like two, three games. After this change was added, um, it never fell off again other than like when it break, like right now it's kind of broken. So yeah, the band yeah. still be snapped. Yeah, and also this plastic here, it's like curvy so that when we hit on the logo, it can go up, so we can push the ball in with the rubber band here, so we can efficiently score balls. And then also, um, like blocker down. So like when blocker is down, originally, the intake gets stuck a lot. So it will get stuck here. Yeah. That's why we um made a hoss up here so that. It doesn't go like far back, so it won't get stuck. Very cool. I'd love to hear about the uh, what's gone into it so far, and obviously working out quite well. As you're doing well here as a filming at the signature event. Uh, let's keep moving on. Talk about your uh, slapper, Marco, and talking about what's gone into that. And we got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, still dive into this robot. I'd love to hear, especially as we work our way into the code that you're doing. So our slapper, our first iteration, of the slapper was actually a flatpole, um, which basically it was a catapult that would go 90 degrees uh, perpendicular to the ground, and that allowed it to get, gain a lot of power and. We needed a lot of power to pull it back as well. Um, the goal was to get the tri ball directly from the catapult into the goal on the other side of wow. the field. But um, it didn't end up working out because of inconsistencies with the goal tolerance and um, because the slapper was, or the catapult was just way too slow to be competitive. Uh, so eventually we switched it to uh, more of like an ace style catapult um, with the slapper nubs here, the rubber bumpers, and um, a catapult that just Stopped, hard stop the round here, it would just launch it over with a slightly higher arc. Um, and eventually we decided to even get rid of that as well because we realized that we weren't even using the catapult as much as we thought we would and the slapper was just faster and more efficient to use. So we just made it uh, thinner and lighter and 
basically that's what we have now. Can we see uh, the catapult in, in action? You mind grabbing a tri ball? Uh, yeah. I'd love to just see how that works. So when uh, he places it on this platform here, uh, we can launch it. And then that goes pretty far. It goes over the barrier pretty consistently. Um, in the past, we've had problems with like consistency when placing the tri balls. But then we added these foam, uh, these foam strips up here that allow the, to grip the tri ball way better. And it won't like slide off the C channel or just like um, go in random places, like uh, turn around, because the tribal is pretty slippery. Are you just using, uh, for your controls, are you just using a macro, are there any uh, sensors in there as well too? Uh, we don't have sensors, but we do have a macro. Um, this button here, it opens the wings and starts to slap her. So we, we have these zip ties over here on our wings that touch the match load zone when we're going to uh, match load. And basically what happens is, when I press that Y button, uh, the macro for our launching, the wings open, they, these zip ties touch the match load zone, and then I get to use the slapper. I don't have to worry about it. I can yeah. just keep my hands on the joysticks, and I won't have to worry about um, having to press the button, the trigger button for catapult, as well as having to press the button for wings and drive around to avoid defense. Uh, one of the things that we just saw there, uh, obviously a lot of pneumatics on your robots. So I'll hear about that. you got a couple of big accumulators I see uh, on there as well. So just walk me through how your pneumatic systems work. So we actually have two separate tanks. You see these two tanks here. They're not connected. These are separate. Um, and the reason for that is because we have these four pistons over here on our hang, um, which I don't know if I have enough air to use right sure. now. But um, basically, there's a lot of bands here. And this, um, when it's at full power, it can push these bands all the way up and it'll allow us to grab onto the bar and pull down. Um, and these bands help us pull down a bit more violently and just give us enough power to have um, a B-tier hang pretty consistently. Um, and the other thing that's on our pneumatic system is this, these wings. Uh, I talked about these zip ties before, but we also have the angled piece of plastic here. Um, there's the spacers underneath, these are zip tied on, uh, but they don't go all the way through the wing, which we, would, which we had before. Um, and that's because we need this part, the flat part, to de-score the, um, the match load from the match load zone when uh, doing the autonomous wind point route for our code. Speaking about code, let's wrap up on this rock. What are some cool things that you want to highlight that you're doing in code uh, for the over-under challenge? Um, so something that we haven't seen a whole lot from other people um, is that we use global turns. So um, basically when the match starts, imagine the bot is set up like this. Our intake is the front of the robot. We call that zero degrees. And basically what happens is our code tells the robot to, um, it tells the robot that there's a co basically a compass. This is zero, this is 90, 180, 270. Sure. And that doesn't change throughout the whole entire match. Uh, basically, and what so that does is- It's all field centric is, the whole time. It's huh? all field centric right. always. And what that does is it allows us to um, be able to always correct it even if it goes off course. So even if I get bumped a couple degrees off course, I can still correct back to the desirable angle. Um, for example, if I'm ramming things into the goal and the robot gets turned a little bit, then we can go back, correct the angle, and slam it again at the right angle so that the tri balls go in. It's really helpful for skills auton and our match auton. That's really cool. Well, absolutely phenomenal robot at 871X. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your team and your bot. Doing well here at the Wave at WPI, so can't wait to see how you do here, and good luck the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.